Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you my top three ways that I use leftover meat on carnivore. I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com where I share keto and carnivore recipes, other cooking ideas that have helped me to lose 140 pounds. If you're new here, I welcome you. I hope you check out some of my other videos and returning viewers, I hope you enjoy today's video. Okay, so today I'm going to show you three different ways and they're kind of my favorite ways to use up leftover meat on carnivore. It Today it happens to be uh, all beef, but you can do some of what I'm going to do today with other meats as well. I looked in the fridge this morning and I, you know, when I was thinking about what I was going to make for my first meal and I thought, I've got to use up some of these leftovers. I have uh, ground beef here, a leftover burger patty. I have leftover brisket skewers and a whole bunch of leftover steak. So I'm going to show you three different things and I'm going to start with the brisket because it takes the longest to cook. So, and that will be in the air fryer. The other two recipes will just be using a pot and a frying pan. It's gonna be super simple, super fast, perfect ways to uh, make use of the leftovers in your fridge. Carnivore does not have to be complicated. So here we go. If you saw my last video, I made some uh, skewers like this. This is from uh, Alice and Kevin on their YouTube channel. I watched them do these skewers and I really am glad that I tried them because they're very good. But then I also discovered another way that I can use them that I think you're going to like. This could be a snack or you could you know, make it as a side dish or whatever. It is a good change in texture. If you've ever heard of uh, Michaela Peterson who does lion diet, she makes a lot of what she calls crunchy things, I think that's, or crunchy bits, something like that. And I decided to try it with these brisket skewers about a week or so ago, and I loved them. They come out really well if you've got some fatty leftover meat. So I'm also going to try to throw in a little bit of steak on that same thing, just to see how I feel about that. And I'm going to save save one skewer for one of my left my other leftover meals. So we're going to do those, and I'm just going to put this aside and choose some steak pieces. I want some with some fat on it. So there's a good one. I'll use that one too. For the crunchy pieces. I think what she does, is, Michaela Peterson. I think what she does is she uses a lot of shredded meats for that, uh, but I found it worked nicely with cubes as well. So I'm going to cut some cubes here or slices, whatever you want to call them. We'll see which ones I like the best. I haven't tried it with steak yet. I don't see why it shouldn't work. And I'm going to take these guys off the skewers. Without stabbing myself. Okay, let's make these a bit smaller. All right, so we have our pieces. I'm going to get this going. I am going to put it on air fry at 400 degrees. However, I've taken out my air fry basket. I'm gonna cook them right in the bottom of the tray. And it takes about 20 minutes. So those are ready to go. And I will need, potato masher works really well for this. Where's my potato masher? I am still looking for things in my kitchen. Aha. For this recipe, like after you get the meat cooking, uh, these two tool, either of these tools works or in a pinch, you know, just a spatula. Uh, what I'm going to be doing, you'll see me doing it is kind of crushing them down into, you know, to flatten them a bit so they get all crisp and crunchy on all sides. So potato masher, I don't know what this is called. It's a, a ground beef turner, I think, or a spatula. So I'll, I'll try them all and see which ones I like the best. OK, 
Okay, so I'm basically just throwing the meat in. In a few minutes, I'll open the lid and check it and see how much fat there is. Uh, because I want to get a good amount of fat in there, which there is on the brisket uh, caps. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. So while those are cooking up, I just want to let you know that Element is sponsoring today's video. Element is a very delicious electrolyte drink. It comes in eight different flavors. It has everything you need to balance your electrolytes without any junk ingredients, um, and it has a science-backed formula of 1,000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. I normally take one a day. However, lately I've been taking two a day because I've been getting like 10,000 steps every day. Uh, it, it's been hot and sweaty, and I just, I'm just needing two a day right now. Right now, Element is offering to my viewers uh, this sample pack. It contains all eight flavors. You can get this for free when you order any of the other elements from their website. Uh, it'll just go into the cart. So you can try them, see if you like them, give them to a friend, whatever you like to do with it. You can get this by going to drinkelement.com slash ketogenic woman. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com forward slash ketogenic woman. The link will be down below in the description notes um, as well as on the screen. So thank you Element for sponsoring today's video. Okay, it's been a few minutes. You can see they are getting crispy, but we want you know, we, we want these to be more than crispy. I'm going to use the potato masher to start flattening them down. I think there will be enough uh, fat in here from the brisket. Okay. Well, this doesn't work as well as I thought it would. So let me see how this one is. Yeah, I like this better. This cuts right into the meat, whereas the potato masher doesn't. So that's what I want. I want to, I'm basically uh, trying to shred and flatten the meat a little bit as I go here. So this works better than the potato masher. And then the other day I just used this because I couldn't find either of those two tools. So, and, and this works well. It worked well for me the other day, so either either one of these two things. Or if you have a better way, let me know. Okay, so we're gonna let that go again for another few minutes and repeat the mashing up. Okay, so I'm ready to show you the second recipe. It's something that I call meat soup. So all you need is, is a pot. So I'll just use this pot here and an assortment of leftover meats. So today I'm going to use some brisket. That's why I saved this skewer. And I'm going to use leftover hamburger. That'll go in. And some leftover steak. Oh, there's a little piece for Teddy. I should save that for him. Okay, so I'm, what I do is I just cut up any leftover meat. It doesn't matter, it can be pork, chicken, beef, I've got three different beefs in this one. Just going to, yeah, I do, I do make my burgers pretty rare, <laughs> so it's not even cooked. So I'm going to use that. This makes a delicious, fast, easy carnivore soup. Take a little bit of this. My ribeye, oh yes. Okay, this goes in here, and I am just going to grab some broth from the fridge and we'll head to the stove. Okay, so I'm just gonna make uh, some simple soup using the leftover meat that I cut up and some broth that I saved from the last time I made some uh, beef brisket. So uh, you can use water and just you know season it, or you can use you know any type of broth that you're using, bone broth. So I am just going to pour it in. It's a little bit gelatinous, which is good. Actually, I'm going to pour it all in. And heat this up. And 
that it, it is as simple as that. This 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 beef recipe, I used to make it just with hamburger meat. Uh, I like it with a different variety of meat, so I just call it meat soup. I'll link down to my uh, original uh, ground beef soup recipe because it's very similar and it shows you how to do it from when the ground beef is raw. Uh, so starting from scratch. Well, some people would argue that my ground beef is already raw because I eat my burgers rare. But anyways, you can use you can use fresh raw meat or you can use uh, cooked meat already in your fridge. So uh, this is really a five minute lunch. And if you uh, have been making my carnivore noodles, you can also throw those in. And I've done that before as well. So we're just going to heat that up. That is a meal, a meal fully carnivore. Okay, this is starting to simmer. Um, you don't need to, you know, have it boiling for a few minutes or anything like that. Really, you're just heating up the broth and the meat because it's all already cooked. And uh, same with if you added the noodles in. It just needs a warming up. Then I'm just gonna dump it in a bowl. That is ready. Okay, so we're at the halfway mark. Just move my soup aside. Okay, what I'm seeing here is the brisket still has a ways to go. The steak is darker than the brisket but it is still not crispy, I can tell from here. So I'm just gonna let it keep going. I mean, we're basically we're making a crunchy snack. That's kind of what the aim is here. So, okay, so that's got about another 10 minutes. We've got our soup made. That was uh, meal number two. I'm now going to show you meal number three which is my favorite way to use leftover steak. I use this, I'm gonna say three to four times a week. This is my first meal of the day. And I always make more steak than what I think I'm going to need so that I can have this meal the next day. And it is basically uh, fried steak and eggs, so simple. And again, I do like to use the pieces that have fat on them. And then the eggs fry up beautifully. I'm gonna measure this just so those of you that um, you know do your portions and macros and things, so you know approximately what I call a meal for myself. Let's see what this is. So this is five and a half ounces of ribeye steak, which is 155 grams. With this, I would uh, probably use two to three eggs, depending on how hungry I am. And uh, so well, let's go over to the stove and, and cook this up. Okay, so I'm just warming up some butter. I've got a tablespoon of butter in there. I have my five and a half ounces of steak. And I'm going to throw in a couple of eggs. Um, I, you know what, just to use up this carton, I might throw in all three eggs. And that would be something I have quite often, as I mentioned. So I have the heat fairly high because I like the edges and the fat to crisp up. And then uh, once it gets a little crispy and a lot of the fat has rendered off, then I will add my eggs. I'm turning down the heat as well now that I'm adding my eggs. And of course, do the eggs whatever way you like them, sunny side up or over easy. One thing I like to do is just kind of mix up my egg whites first. I do not like runny egg whites, so I like to make sure that they are definitely cooked. 
And sometimes I break up the yolks. I saw this, I saw steak and butter gal cook her eggs this way and I've, I've always kind of liked this way. Sometimes I really like them just over easy, but every now and then I just do it her way and I like it. So I am going to plate this up. You can, of course, add salt and pepper or whatever you normally would add. That is it. I've turned off the heat and I am going to plate this up. I kind of chose a plate that might be a little small. <laughs> there we go. Steak and eggs. My special breakfast that I love. Whoa. Okay. So this has cooked for 20 minutes. I'm going to scoop them out. They are going to be crispy. Now the ribeye is definitely darker than the brisket, which I believe it, that is part, that is due to the color of the two. They are different cuts. Grab a plate. I'm going to let these drain on a paper towel and cool off before I pop one in my mouth because I do not want to burn myself. Oh, and I want to salt them while they're still hot. Uh, I kind of treat these like, like what I do is I put them in a bag and uh, just, you know, have them. Uh, if I have run out of carnivore crisps, say, then I will definitely use these, kind of like a, a meat snack. And let me get some salt on those. All right. So let's do a little recap here. We have our steak and eggs, my favorite first meal of the day. We have hamburger soup. Actually, correction, uh, we have meat soup. Uh, I, I always used to make it with just hamburger, but now I like to add, there's three different meats in here. Meat soup, something I often have for lunch or for a dinner, and crunchy things. Uh, this is the idea I got from Michaela Peterson, and I have two different meats in here. I have ribeye and I have brisket. I, I'm hoping it's cooled enough for me to bite into it without burning myself. So I'm gonna try a piece of the ribeye. Mmm, very good. I don't know if you could hear the crunch. <laughs> okay, I'm trying the uh, brisket now. Oh, they're still hot. Hang on. I love the brisket like this. The, uh, if the fat is completely dried, it is so crunchy and good. Mm. So good. So just to recap, 20 minutes in the air fryer, no basket, let it, you know, cook in its own fat or add some fat if you need to, and just cook it till it's crispy. All our air fryers could be a little different. That's Pippi whining for her cut. <laughs> All, because all of our air fryers are a little different, keep an eye on it because, um, you know, it can go from done to burnt fairly quickly. And uh, yeah, great snack. So I hope that you enjoyed today's three favorite ways to use up leftover meat. I haven't had my first meal today, so I'm going to be eating this one and then I'm going to save these for later. So Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I can hardly wait to see you back on the next video. Episode 289, the top three ways I use beef, no. The top three ways I use, to use leftover meat on, okay. The top three ways to use leftover, let me start again. The top three ways to eat leftover meat on carnivore. Scene 1A, Mark. Yay! I'm Anita from Ketogenic. Ketogenic, hang on. I was sort of leaning looking that way. <laughs>